Okay. There we go. Oh, good. Ray is joining here. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> start the share again. All right. So happy Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Um, I'm going to rattle through some interesting things. Uh, Vanessa's joining us. And then, and if we, if we, hopefully we have some time. Um, hi, Rhea. Good to see you. Um, to, to chat about what our feelings are about this. So, so this is going to be exact at 726 PM today, but we're, it's kind of uh, something where we've been building up through April and I'll, I'll put another lens on, um, like, like where we can cap it. Hi, Vanessa. Good to see you. Um, like where we might be able to look for the energies. <laughs> um, but one of the ways that we can think about this particular conjunction is it's a, it's kind of like an eclipse in the sense that like there's a potency there. Um, this energy, I don't focus on this, but you might hear other astrologers talk about earthquakes and electrical storms and sunstorms. And those are the types of things that Jupiter and Uranus can do, particularly Uranus, but Jupiter adds the adds like the rocket fuel to the rocket, so to speak. Um, but there's also this idea of these waves that are coming through. So if we think about like a sunstorm, like the waves of creativity, the rate, the waves of disruption, the waves of innovation and innovation, disruption um, beyond linear space and time is, is what can happen. We're going to look at th this theme. We're also going to go back in history and talk about things that have happened when this happens. This happens every 14 years. So it's pretty rare as far as things go, but but very rare to have it in the sign of Taurus. Five times in the past millennium, and I wrote the dates out, um, the last time um, is that we can focus on, that we will focus on is 1941. Um, and the next time this happens is in 2107. So pretty rare just in terms of what happens. But let's look at like a conjunction. So if you think about, I just wanted to make sure we've all got a foundation and I'll be pretty quick here. But if you think about your ast astrological chart, if there's two planets that are at the same degree, at the same spot on your chart, it's called a conjunction. But it's actually depending on within three degrees, some astrologers will even say five, but this is exact, exact, same degree, same minute at 726, whatever time I said above um, PM tonight. So that means there's a combined energy, but that doesn't always mean it's simpatico. It depends on the planets. So it's like you've got roommates and if the roommates really get along, they like to talk to each other. It's great if they don't. So it can be, it's considered a positive or a negative aspect. Um, and in terms of conjunctions, the inner planets are the personal planets. They're, they're, they have, they, they, are more likely to come together because they just travel more quickly. The inner planets, the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. So those conjunctions are less of a big deal because they're traveling so quickly, they're likely to meet up um, with other planets. The outer planets are the ones that are a bigger deal, which is we have two outer planets is what, I, what I'm getting to. Those are called generational planets. That's why the Pluto transit Pluto and Aquarius is such a big deal because it's a once in a lifetime type thing because they have such larger, takes more time to for them to orbit. So these are the things that affect, the, the, it's not a personal thing. You know, Mercury retrograde is when your computer or your phone, it's a very in your life. These, the outer planets are more about community levels, um, which is why we're gathered together to talk about this today. So let's first look at Jupiter in Taurus. We're going to look at each of them separately. And we're going to put them together so that we can kind of cull some themes. So Jupiter in one word, I think of it as expansion, but it's luck, inspiration, personal growth. The window for Jupiter in Taurus, May 16th last year to May 25th this year, spending about a year in the sign of Taurus. So um, Jupiter kind of wants us to get amplified and excited, but also similar a little bit to Saturn. It also wants us to put this stuff in the physical world, but in a more expansive way. When Jupiter is in Taurus, Taurus is a little bit of a challenge for Jupiter because Taurus, the one thing that Taurus doesn't like is sudden change. Taurus is an earth sign and what helps us to ground things down. That's really good with Jupiter, but it doesn't like things to happen too quick. So 
the risk taking that we're going to feel like doing when Jupiter is in Taurus the, the, is the ones that aren't sudden, more calculated risks, thinking about things, talking about things, let, allowing the flow of things to show us where we're going. The, the theme also is expansion, but this expansion is slowly, we're, we're being encouraged to take the necessary steps. It's a foundational energy. It's also very enterprising. Um, Taurus is fiscally kind of conservative. So there's gonna be slow growth in the world, slow growth in business. We're gonna be spending, but we're gonna be aware of what we're doing, not just you know, blowing off tons of money learning and things in terms of how we're going to be seeing and having our realizations there's not necessarily a hack we're going to be again the word is foundational that I, that kept coming through and then also there's this truth seeking so there's the media that's churning up fear these the, the, both of these signs are, are pointing to the idea that the fear churning the fear mongering the war mongering that we are living in right now that that is going to be seen for what it is so the other thing to think about though is that uh the soapboxing that we can kind of tend to do i know i do it <laughs> not go, not going too fast letting letting the, there be a conversation um we're, we're supposed to be trying to, to to talk to each other versus just whap each other on that on the head at this at this point so the idea i wrote is that everyone matters when jupiter's in taurus Let's go to Jupiter, uh, Uranus, and Taurus. So Uranus, I call it, we are the high technology we seek, but it's sudden change, high technology, innovation, intuition, freedom. Uranus has a bigger orbit. It's going to spend a little more time in Taurus. It's been here since May 15th, 2018. It'll be in Taurus till April 2026. So Taurus and Uranus have some challenging energy. I would offer that Jupiter and Uranus are, are really good together. And then putting those two in Taurus can have some challenges as one of the themes, but also those challenges are going to be really good to make the changes effective in the physical world. So, um, so Uranus wants change like lightning bolt fast. Taurus doesn't necessarily like that. So we're going to start to see some clunkiness in the changes. Um, Last time, one of the times this happened, we was the Boston Tea Party, no taxation without representation. If you think about what that meant, there was this um, rebellion, obviously it was a rebellion, um, but it was about a purpose that was for the purpose of expansion. Um, the settlers were trying to get out from underneath colonialism. It's arguable whether or not they effectively did that. Um, but the other thing that, that happened in 1941 was the, the Great Depression was ending at that time. Now, if you think about that clunkiness of that change, that's why I'm mentioning this here, that wasn't just something that was lightning bolt overnight, even though some of the inventions that happened were very quick and overnight, but the way that that change happened was a little bit start stop, but the, but the, but the momentum was already happening. So that's the energy. There's also the idea here that, that it's a technology, but technology, the technology that we're going to be really supported in using is technology for our own betterment for our own independence so that we can be of service so i put technology for self-sufficiency you can think about that in terms of there's more ways to earn income i think you can earn income on TikTok. you can do an airbnb you could you know drive around lyft or something like that all those things are, are innovations that technology has supported people in um kind of existing within corporate culture moving beyond just being in being stuck in a in a particular box also there's a focus on farming and food and that's interesting because that is something that is up in our if we think about the what's happening in the headlines right so um part of it is that there's you know the, a lot of the big tech is trying to come over and solve the food problem with another big box technology but there's also this idea that the focus on farming and food with Taurus is earth-based. So it means we got to connect to Gaia. We got to think about what we eat is, is our medicine. We got to look to herbs for our medicine. So those themes, if you think about the rise in, in herbalism, people willing to interact with plants and remember that plants are the original source of nourishment and medicine for everybody, humans included. The shadow side of Uranus and Taurus is interesting. That's that power over the people. That's the... Um, 
that's that's Hitler essentially. Um, that's the way that we're we're moving out of that top down into the circular structure when Pluto's moving out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. But also, the leadership disruption that um, patriarchy has kind of steeped people in fear and ignorance and warmongering. That's that energy that is the shadow shadow side of Uranus and Taurus. So when when Hitler, who is a Taurus, took power, this was right when Uranus, the sign before Taurus that Uranus is in is Aries. So that's when Hitler took over power. He retained his power during the time that Uranus was in Taurus. But that is also the time that the U.S. was shifting out of the Depression, and that was the time where it's arguable that that was something that helped that side of the war um, win. So it was also, I was talking about like the engine is already starting to go, but it's clunky. Um, so um, there's tons of innovation, there's tons of revolution. But if we think back to World War II, there's tons of shadow, there's tons of fear, there's tons of warmongering. And we we live in that, we're, we're living in that space right now. But if we also think about the fact that we're coming up out of a darker cycle, so we're not going to push total repeat, but we can feel the, the idea that people are talking about World War III may or may not happen. But the fact that it's even up in the air is we can feel that level of disruption on the planet. It's also a time for culture, art, and music. And I think this is really cool because if we think about what's happening with YouTube, what's happening with podcasts, what's happening with Instagram, what's happening with TikTok, this has enabled billions and billions and billions of people to express themselves. And that is a form of culture in some sense. Um, and people are consuming that culture and they are creating that culture. So that's one of the ways that technology is supporting a revolution in some sort of art and music. But also, I would offer that the word culture means more than Renaissance paintings. The culture means indigenous cultures. Culture means people who are close to the land who haven't forgotten their traditions, cultures. Yeah. yeah? Oh, so I'm going to mute you. Okay. So let's, so now let's go to now. Let's go to I'm not sure everybody's muted. I hear. Okay, there we go. Um, so these two guys are in Taurus during the window of May 16th last year to May 25th this year. They're exact today, tonight. But the theme, if we want to put a cap on both ends of when we're going to be feeling and working with this energy, it's in this time frame. Um, and if we put them together, we can think about Jupiter and Uranus having similar ideas of expansion but they are differing in the methodology that they use to create this change. So that's why the themes of innovation and rebellion and um, like rocket boost forward into the future are there, but Jupiter's more 3D oriented. If you think about it, it's closer in, it's a closer, it's, it's, it's right next to those personal planets we were talking about. So it's going to help us work in the physical world. It's going to work with linear time. Uranus doesn't do that. Uranus is subtle energy. Uranus is more Plutonian. If we think about the ways that things happen that seem to be unforeseen changes, seem to be these magical things. If, but if we really start to put a pulse on it, we can. This is how people predict things that other people can't see, right? You can start to feel and sense into the energies. Um, but they, but these two share, what they do share is this need to, to move beyond limitations, and the, and they can they can see the limitations and they're they're awakening awakening this feeling within us that we need change that we start to believe that we can do this that anything is possible that we're not stuck in the world and with the circumstances that are around us you know I say this in the podcast that today is a product of every single vibration up until now tomorrow is a product of right now today so that's why we're gathered. So the idea is this revolutionary theme, but it's a personal it, in inward, we're, we're, the, the times that we're living in. And this is Pluto in moving into Aquarius. This is that we are the change, that we, we trust our judgment, that we can, we can have conversations with each other, but we are the revolution that we seek. The idea also is that these things that we used to have inklings of that seemed out there, I'm sure all of us can think of an experience where so-and-so you know, I'm sure I'm the token in my family of like, she's an interesting person sometimes. I'm sure people say that, you know, so, but, but being out there 
is going to start to be right on time right now because it's almost like the the inner world has reminded us that we need to trust our intuition that we need to to be reaching for things that we can't see but this is going to start to become very more normal in the 3d world as a result of this transit today this transit today is again if we think about the the, the great depression and we'll get to that theme that wasn't a, a a, a change that happened overnight, but there were some things that happened around there that were that were irreversible and that guaranteed that that change was afoot. So for us, we're the the, the visionary idea, the dreamer idea, the idea that we're not supposed to be stuck. We're not supposed to just look around in fear and stay in the situations that no longer serve us. There's also the idea of sudden, sudden opportunities, and this is more Uranian. Um, but because it's in Taurus, those themes could be Earth center, but Taurus also deals with the material world. It likes its creature comforts and it's um, it deals with money. It deals with financial systems. Um, it also deals with body care, beauty, and art. So those are the ideas of where um, opportunities could pop up. So let's go back to the last time this transit happened, 1941. There were a couple things that I dug up. Um, there was a lot of progress in feminism and in workplace rights. At this point, World War II was at its peak. So if you think about those energies, we can feel it. There's a lot of violence in the world, right? But this is when women flooded the workplace. There, the men were overseas fighting. So the women were doing historically um, jobs that were male dominated. They were they were working in arms factories. They were driving ambulances. They were driving trucks. They were doing things that they'd never done before. And the union started to uh, be pressured to have women have equal pay. Um, that was a big gain in feminism. It's important to note that that gain was not intersectional. There were a lot of African-American people of women of color who had occupied the workforce for quite a long time, they did not realize those same changes. So maybe some of the changes that are happening now are a broader version of equality. I think one of the themes that kept coming through for me as I was preparing this yesterday is that everybody matters. That's one of the themes. We all matter. We're all equal at this point. There was also the first computer. I didn't know this until I dug around yesterday. The first computer was invented during this time it was invented in germany it was a digital computer for aerodynamics of airplanes it was destroyed when the allies bombed berlin but the fact that that computer start became came into existence if we think about the world that we live that was the invention that happened at this time so so we so we're we're witnessing tons of kinds of inventions but the idea that this it's almost like a steam engine's getting going the engine's going the the changes are going to keep flowing. There was also this idea of um, windfalls or but it's more about the idea of collective relief, which is also very Aquarian. Pluto and Aquarius likes this transit right here. Um, as I mentioned, the Great Depression was coming to an end because of the the world World War II and all the jobs that were created. That's arguable whether or not that was there's a lot of things to say about that, but um but there were also these it was clunky there were still really bad things that happened during this time if we think about the bombing of pearl harbor that was also what happened here and that was a result of technology so technology can be used for light it can be used some possible themes for this year as i mentioned everybody matters so human rights progression um, big technological advances. There might be some kind of a sudden windfall. I read on somewhere this morning that they're starting to forgive student debt. Um, I don't know. Science and technology are, st are this is, this, we know we live in this world. They are setting up to really rework re the ways that we live our lives. There's also this idea that there's, with Jupiter, Jupiter likes global things. Jupiter likes foreign policy. So there might be, as a result, if we think about that was that was World War II, right? Um, 
there's that possibility that we're going to be seeing those shifts. The other thing that could happen is earth-based sustainable practices because Taurus is an earth sign and Taurus is going to remind us Gaia is our home. We we have to not push climate world, global warming ahead at the, at the pace we're going, right? So those types of themes. Um, another type of theme is, you know, the protect the the people who protect are the water protectors, you know, the the pipeline stuff. The um I was listening to a global UN gathering of indigenous youth, and I did not know that um, Standing Rock, I guess, was successful. They they won the court battle, but then this this sixteen year old girl who is the water protector of that land uh, in the Dakotas said they've won so many times, and that pipeline is is working and it is operational right now, and they have they're pushing it and and they they keep fighting to save the water for everybody, not just for themselves. And so those types of changes are also the type of changes that by the end of this year, potentially this energetic could help resolve that conflict in a way that it would serve the earth, that's Taurus. The other thing about this though, is I mentioned the word clunky and I destabilizing in some sense, because we're living in a 3D world, Uranus is beyond linear time. So some of this stuff that is gonna come up can feel destabilizing, but that's why the Taurus energy is actually really good because Taurus is fixed feminine earth. So Taurus is gonna really support us in, rooting down in staying present in breathing in being out in nature so that we can be in this sort of fast forward um transformational time the uh, i was i was doing a, a little bit of wordplay here to think about ideas of things that might happen like a lightning flash on a dark landscape or eureka moments just that idea of boom the energy can happen just like that but again we are the high technology we seek so when we think about you know the idea of ai one of the things that comes through and i think we all know this is that we need to maintain our you know part of the idea of valuing arts and cultures there might even be a a shift back to really valuing human created art and human written words and the, 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 the level of creation that only we have, for example. So close with things to do because I'm, I always like to, I'm a doer. <laughs> okay, this is great, but give me something to do, right? Uh, so expand. One of the themes that's gonna happen today is, with, or and from here on out, Everything, the, the the big vision that or the visions that have been percolating up until now, be willing to let that be a global thing. Be willing to let your vision, your creative version of anything, your belief in yourself and your belief that you can do anything, let it get exponentially bigger. Be willing to entertain those those bigger versions of your dreams and of who you are. That is what this energy is totally supporting. Reciprocity, give. We are also still remembering this is Taurus that we live on this planet together that everybody matters we have to take care of ourselves first but we also have to remember that we are not separate so the idea of how can we contribute whether it's financial or energetic or with love with light but the idea is to and already grounding yourself so one of the things that came to mind for me was an Epsom salt foot bath like if you think about like using salt, walking around bare feet, do things that really help you stay in your body, stay present, because this energy is, it's big and it's, it can lift you up. Also connect to earth. The idea would be that she's speaking to us. What can we do about what she has, what she's telling us? And that doesn't mean that, you know, we all have to move to the forest and try to grow our own food as I am attempting to do. It means we do what we can when we can, right? And and be willing to, when we have those realizations, take ownership of, of that uh, information when it comes through. 
and then challenge, challenge the beliefs, the habits, the fears that are blocking the change that you crave. Because one of the things, if we think about the shadow side of this energy is the shadow side of World War II, right? Um, interestingly enough, I don't know for those of you who have done energy training with me, but you know, Hitler commandeered a energy healing symbol and turned it into a swastika and used it. So those types of things, but that symbol still exists and that symbol it can and is being used for light. So it, it means to be aware, but to be willing to, to challenge ourselves first and to be willing to challenge those things that we see and feel are, are not working. So with that, I'm going to stop. I've talked for 28 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing and seeing if anybody has anything to add or to anything that struck you or <laughs> like that's literally how I feel when I talk about this and even talking to you I can feel like me I don't know if you can hear it in my voice but it's not I feel very comfortable in this circle but talking about this energy gets me kind of really excited that for change and also like wanting to go put my feet on the earth and take some deep breaths so Okay, well, yes, Carrie. Thank you guys. If, I'm gonna just say thank you for being here with me. This is- uh... Wait, 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 wait. You're gonna tell us about your course, aren't you? That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you think I'd be a better salesman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do that. I had another gathering and I was supposed to tell people about the course and like, I get so like, all right, I don't know your time see you later bye um so yeah okay well this is perfect because the course is called the karma clearing project and it's interesting how that came through and i didn't even know why that stuck but then when i was preparing yesterday for today i was like oh geez this is totally true but, but the idea was that it's it's going to be probably about a six week course at this juncture we're going to be learning energy healing and clearing techniques I've already taught a course on, um, you know, I've taught a course on energy healing and dowsing and pendulum work. And so we're going to be dabbling in that, but I spent some time this year, uh, doing some more teaching from a, um, a cowboy in Wyoming, who's like the most unusual teacher of energy healing that I was expecting. Cause I looked at his picture and he's got, he's riding a horse. He's got a gun in his pocket. He's holding, you know, he's just so, but, but, but dowsing is legitimate to everybody believes in dowsing that you don't have to be a, a a hippie who lives in a yurt as i guess i get categorized sometimes uh, they use it to find water that's how they've used it. so i've been working with him and i have some new techniques that i want to share and first we're going to be working with ourselves and where we live and we're going to be having some fun with clearing energy and i think that that is we can all feel given the topic that we just spent the last 40 minutes talking about it's a good time to be energetically sensitive it's also a good time to have some tools in our pockets so that we can navigate this world for ourselves and also to be of service but but the other part of karma clearing there's there's going to be we're going to do a little bit of ancestral work i taught a course on ancestral healing last year that it's so funny. I went back. I, I I was qualified to teach it, but one of the things that came up during the course was we were all sort of blown away by the level of intergenerational trauma that we were discovering when we were looking into our ancestors because we've lived in pretty dark times. So we're going to be doing that on a um, in a different way. So we're not going to get mired in it, but we're going to start to be able to address moving some of that energy for our own lineage. But then we're also going to be working on the world because the world needs healing. So the, the latter part of the course is going to be, you know, working in the Middle East and using these tools. And I've come to discover that being in circle you know, Lynn McTaggart wrote a book on it. I think I haven't read it, but I know she's one of the people that is like famous in doing this type of stuff. Right. But I remember even when I was doing my research and for my PhD, they have, they have, you know, documented that they decrease the level of crime in Washington, DC by and people getting together and sending energy. So we're going to be 
that's kind of the ilk of my podcast in one sense, but we're going to be sussing all that out over together. And also it's going to start with um, a one-on-one interview or just time with together where it's going to be me and you talking about some themes so that we can really have it be tailored to the group. So that's the course. I could share the website. Do you want to see the website or is that enough? You want to see the website? I'm like, I feel I, the way I feel about that is I'm like, I didn't, I didn't do my hair and blow dry my makeup, but you guys can look at it. It's just, you're going to see that it's, um, it's almost done. Do you have May. dates yet? Yeah. Um, May 25th, it's going to start. Get to, I was supposed to, um, send that. I was supposed to launch and invite you all to join in the last email you just got from me. But the other thing that happened to me this week was um, I mentioned that, so I live, I'm starting a farm and I, and in spring, I do a lot of landscaping. I do actually like a couple hours a day of like weed whacking and mowing just to keep the grass down, to keep the snakes out, to keep the ticks. I whacked my, I got whacked in the face with a rock and I've just been living through a concussion this week. I've never had a I've never been hit in the face. I've never had a concussion. So I was, I was just a little slow this week. Like I had to do my podcast. Usually I do a podcast in like one fell swoop. I had to trim together 18 different snippets because I just was forgetting what I was supposed to say. I don't know if you can tell that's what happened in the podcast, but I was like, oh my God. So anyway, suffice to say, I was, I really wanted to launch this and share it with you guys, but I just had to let it like walk my talk and uh, realize that I had to go with the flow. So let me go to the, let me go to the page and then I'll share my screen so you guys can see it. Thank you for your patience with me. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that I have like a hundred tabs open in my thing. Don't mind that. But so, so we're going to be you can't see much. I, I, you can. You're going to be able to look, look to, to to read all this. I'm not going to read it to you. There's going to be some intake curriculum. I'm probably not going to put out. I had way too much content, but we're going to be doing some pre preview work before we meet on the 25th, and then we're going to meet for six consecutive Saturdays um, to do the work. And the price is 333. It's 30% off, so it's going to be about 230 bucks. If that is at all prohibitive. This is all going to the project called Seeding Reciprocity, which means it's not all about money. So um, reach out to me. That's not that's not um, a problem. It just kind of wanted to value it for what it was. And so we're going to be working with stones and crystals, too. At the end, we're going to do some grid work uh, along with some um, some some dowsing work and some energy work and some ancestral work. And some personal journal work. So you can see the web page, but I don't really want you to read it because I, I need to proof it again. Um, but that's kind of the the next thing that I'm working on. So yay. Thank you guys for reminding me that I was supposed to share about that. <laughs> and um yeah, let's if anything, if there's anything that comes up and you want to share it with me, you guys all have my email for today's event. I'm grateful for everybody that was able to make this um, circle happen. So be blessed and know that we live, I mean, I, I, we live in powerful times. We know that. And now we're really starting to see the the yes of that, right? The, 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 the things unfolding in front of us. So I'm, I'm grateful to have you guys with me on the journey. Thank you so much for everything you shared and yeah, really resonating with that nervous and excited energy. Totally, totally. Ross says, thank you. Vanessa says, thank you, Raya. Okay, Carrie says, sounds amazing. Love you guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.